The Fire Pro series of workstation cards were never meant for gaming, but their DNA is still based on Radeon technology. The main differentiator is that they've been tuned for workstation loads instead of gaming, which makes the comparisons between cards and gaming performance a little trickier. They also come with their own unique set of drivers, but do those drivers really hold back gaming performance? Today I wanted to take a look at four different Fire Pro cards spanning four generations of Radeon technology. They were all released between 2011 and 2014. All of them have a TDP of 75 watts, but the V4900 is based on Terrascale 2, the V5900 on Terrascale 3, the W5000 on GCN 1.0, and the W5100 on GCN 2.0. Based on just this information, you could assume that performance would scale upwards from the 4900 up to the W5100, but that gets a little more unclear when we look at the performance numbers. We can see that the V4900 has 768 gigaflops of performance, while the V5900 has a lower 614 gigaflops. The W5000 and 5100 have 1267 and 1428 respectively, which those kind of make sense in that order. Looking at memory, they each come with either one, two, or four gigabytes of memory, but the memory bandwidth ranges from 64 gigabytes all the way up to 102 gigabytes with the W5000, a higher number than the W5100. And as for DirectX supports, the V-Series cards support DirectX 11. The W5000 supports DirectX 12 officially, but only at the lowest version, and so newer games that require DirectX 12 will not be compatible while the W5100 supports the full DirectX 12. We're going to be testing all these cards with the Amerdame Zone Unified Radeon third-party drivers to see if we actually can unlock more performance by using gaming-centered drivers. One side effect of installing these new drivers is that the card now thinks it is a Radeon card, with its name changing to its Radeon equivalent. In this case, the V4900 becomes the HD6670, the V5900 becomes an HD6930, which it's cut down from. The W5000 becomes an R9270X, which it's cut down from. And the W5100 becomes an R7260X, interestingly lower than what the W5000 is cut down from. Will any of this change gaming? Let's go to the benchmarks. Starting off with 3D Mark Fire Strike, which is the only test that all of these cards can run, and we can see not much has changed in between the two driver versions. Looking at the custom drivers versus the stock drivers and everything's within basically 1%, which is really more margin of error. So the fact that the custom drivers are leading in three of the four cards is not really noteworthy. What we can see is the gulf between the Terrascale generation of cards and the GCN generation of cards is wide, but the same can't be said when comparing Terrascale cards or GCN cards. Especially when looking at the V4900 versus the V5900, their scores are practically identical. Moving over to Temtem, and the same story pretty much plays out. At 1080p medium quality settings, the gulf between generations is large, and the gulf inside generations is very, very small. This time with the W5000 and W5100 giving identical performance. The custom drivers are faster on three out of the four cards, but only by one FPS, so not noticeable when gaming. The V4900 is the only card to not get an uplift in this game, though more than likely this is a limitation of the one gigabyte of memory. Moving over to Rolledout, and it's really an interesting situation here. Rolledout really loves memory bandwidth, and so the W5000 with its slightly higher memory bandwidth outscores the W5100. Again, it's one FPS, nothing really to write home about, but it is interesting nonetheless. The V5900 and 4900 score identical performance, and the custom drivers don't seem to be making a difference in this game. Moving over to Overwatch, and at 1080p low, we are seeing some of the biggest differences we've seen between cards, though really nothing between the stock and custom drivers. Here we can see the W5100 getting the edge over the W5000 due to its higher core clock, and the V5900 is 13% faster than the V4900, which is the biggest difference we've seen. Control at 1080p low plays out pretty much just as we saw with Overwatch. The W5100 comes in first, the W5000 is a very close second, and the V-series cards are a distant third and fourth, though again the V5900 maintains a lead over the V4900. And none of the cards benefited from custom drivers. 
Dirt 3 was released around the same time as all these cards and, expectedly, runs pretty well even at 1080p Ultra. The W5100 and W5000 both come in around the 50 FPS mark, with the W5100 having a slight advantage there, with the V5900 and 4900 both being in the 20 FPS range and really not having much to separate them. The custom drivers do technically increase the performance on two of these cards, but again, it's one frame and so really margin of error. The story changes though in PUBG. At 1080p ultra low quality settings, we can see an 8% boost in performance by using the custom drivers. The newer GCN cards do see the biggest gain here, with the W5100 increasing from 65 to 72 FPS and the W5000 increasing from 61 to 66 FPS. The V5900 also sees a 6% increase from 31 to 33 FPS, though I'm not sure you would notice a 2 FPS difference. The V4900 seemingly has no gain from using the custom drivers, and I'm thinking this all comes down to the 1 gigabyte of memory limitation. That being said, PUBG is a pretty dynamic game, and so the workloads can vary between runs, so it's possible that the V4900 would also see a small gain. One game I was hoping to see a large increase in was Halo Infinite, and it definitely delivered there. At 768p on the low quality settings, we went from 17 FPS on the W5100 up to 33 FPS with the custom drivers, at almost 100% increase. This takes the game from completely unplayable to actually rather enjoyable, which is a great performance boost for the low cost of free. While obviously this was not an exhaustive test of every single game on the market, it's pretty safe to say that the gains you'll experience with these custom drivers are going to be few and far between, with the rare exception. A bigger performance increase can be achieved through overclocking, though the W5100 and V5900 both are at lockdown at the BIOS level. That does mean, though, that we can overclock the W5000 and the V4900 and see if we can achieve the same level of performance that the bigger brothers have. Looking at Firestrike again, and we can see the W5000 is now by far the fastest card in getting a 20% increase from our overclock, which, since it's based off a of 2700X, isn't even really an overclock. The V4900 also leapfrogs the V5900 with a 15% increase through its overclock. Taking a look at Overwatch again, since that was the game we saw the biggest differences between cards, and again, the W5000 is now running away with the lead with 100 FPS, the 20% increase matching what it had in Firestrike. The V4900 also gets its basically 15% lead from Firestrike here too, bringing it in line with the V5900. And this does boost the value of the W5000 and the V4900 in my opinion. Long term, the custom drivers are probably going to help the W5100 the most since it supports a later version of DirectX 12 than any of the other cards, and that could be the difference of not playable and playable like we saw in Halo Infinite, but as the card gets older it's going to be further below the minimum requirements in many new games, so the custom drivers aren't really going to help it that much. Still, there really isn't any performance penalty by using these drivers, so if you are going to use this card primarily for gaming, you might as well use them. They might just hold you over until you can upgrade.